April is Autism Acceptance Month, and just in time to cap off the month comes Neurodiverse Northwest, a conference dedicated to celebrating the neurodiverse community and giving autistic kids and their families a place to socialize and play. We'll cover all of that and more in this episode of What's New in Games for Health. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Digital.Games, the channel all about games and health. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon. That's the best way to support me and the channel and make sure you never miss any new content. We are almost at 300 subscribers, so let's try and see if we can hit that mark. The question of the day is tell me about the last board game night or video game night you shared with family or friends. Who was there? What game did you play? How did you feel? Game night is a staple for families across the world, and whether you are playing sitting around a table or in front of a TV, you probably have some pretty good memories of the game and the connections formed around it. I know for me, I'll always have incredible memories of playing Super Smash Bros late into the night with my buddies in college, and those memories are a core part of our continued friendship to this day. As it turns out, there is something to these connections shared around a game and experts are using games to help foster social skills among kids who have trouble socializing and communicating, such as kids with autism. Role-playing has been a part of learning and mental health techniques for basically since, since the first formal therapy was created. That's Dr. Rafael Bocamazzo, or Dr. B, former social skills coach at Aspiring Youth. During his five years at Aspiring Youth, a social skills facilitator program in Washington State, Dr. B became the lead facilitator of their Dungeons & Dragons program. I asked Dr. B if he could explain to me how this popular tabletop RPG is being used to help kids with autism work on their social skills. And I was surprised to hear how grounded in the science this type of play really is. You know, it's it, it's one of those things that when you once you lay it out, it seems so obvious that it's shocking that nobody did it sooner. We think about the things that are involved I and mean, it's essentially it's synchronous communication skills. There has to be a degree of emotional and behavioral regulation in order to be part of the team. There has to be various skills developed in both verbal and nonverbal communication. There has to be impulse control, definitely frustration tolerance. If somebody does something unexpected flexibility in developing executive functioning skills but what's cool about it is it is within the context of a safe framework of the game and so it gives the opportunity to make mistakes and even fix those mistakes in us in a fairly consequence free way that is not present in real life while games may provide a safe environment for autistic kids to experiment and grow the settings around where these games are celebrated are often not. In a normal non-pandemic year, some of the biggest video game conferences gather tens of thousands of attendees to all come and celebrate one thing, their mutual love for games. While this can be a great way to connect and make friends for many, the roughly 1 in 40 kids with autism spectrum disorder risk being left out of the fun because a conference with tight crowded spaces and blaring music may just not be an option for them. Seeing this problem firsthand, Aspiring Youth's founder Ben Wall created Neurodiverse NW, a gaming-centered conference created from the ground up with autistic kids and their families in mind. The conference was actually conceived by some young uh, autistic young adults. We started to have conversations about how Comic-Con and PAX, as neat of gaming conventions as they were, they didn't really center the, the autistic community. They would go to these conventions, kind of make a beeline for their favorite tables, get a little of the experience and then just get out of there. That was a missed social opportunity. And what would it be like to have a com convention or conference that was really centered on the autistic youth and their families? Three years ago, the first neurodiverse conference took place and included live D&D campaigns, tabletop games, VR stations, and gaming exhibits. This year looks a little bit different as the conference will be fully digital, but the show isn't letting that hold it back. 
with exciting keynote speakers like actor Mickey Rowe or entrepreneur Danny Reed, who will be speaking about their careers as autistic individuals. What programs like Neurodiverse Northwest and people like Ben or Dr. B are doing so well is showing that neurodiverse and autistic people benefit from the same types of things that we all do, but they just might need to interact with them in a little bit of a different way. Especially around the game night table, no one should ever be excluded from play. Well, that is what's new in Games for Health. If you wanna learn more about aspiring youth or neurodiverse Northwest, or on how to make your next event more neurodiverse friendly, I have provided some helpful links in the description below. If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, and share. My favorite part of running this channel is interacting with you. So get in those comments and say hi. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you next time on Digital Doc Games.